Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we are going to be talking about the methods to get to know and to learn about the fashion industry. Now whether that is fashion designers or brands or stylists or photographers or journalists or anything like that, I'm going to let you know how I get all my fashion information, how you can get yours and all that kind of stuff. So before we get into the actual video though, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. So you can go down below, hit the subscribe button, turn on my post notifications, what do you have to lose? Also, if you guys like these kinds of videos where I share how I get all my fashion information, amazing things that we can all watch and talk about together, definitely give this video a like. And also, by the time that this video is up, you guys will actually be able to purchase some of the clothing that I've been wearing in my recent videos. I'm working with Shop the Break, which is a vintage store here in New York that I love. It's very near to my heart and it's an amazing, amazing company. And I've decided to partner with them where I will be displaying their clothes on the videos, but also you can shop them. They're very affordable. It's all vintage. It's all amazing, one-of-a-kind pieces. If you guys like them, definitely go onto their website. I will link it in the description box. And if you guys want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Hot Lamote. So let me just say that getting into the fashion industry and like learning and educating yourself about fashion is not a hard thing. It does not cost a lot of money. It is not anything crazy. It's really, really simple. It's just a matter of being able to sit down and read or watch or listen wherever, whenever, whenever you want. I started learning about fashion probably when I was like 14. I wasn't like the biggest fashion file or like fashion obsessive person for like the first 14 years of my life. But when I started going to school in Manhattan in New York, I kind of like fell in love with like clothing and how people wore them and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, well, let me learn about fashion and fashion brands. And it started off really simple. It was really just learning about like brands and designers and what are the names and how are they pronounced? See, I'm also like not. And what, seven years later, I like still can't pronounce half of the French names on the Fashion Week roster. So, I mean, here we are, nobody's perfect. You can't learn everything, but you can always try. So let's just get into it. So the first and most important tip I'm going to give you is to start a Twitter. Now you're probably like, why would I start a Twitter? That's so boring, I don't care about Twitter. Actually, you should. Twitter is amazing because it's a constant news source that's going 24-7. Also, a lot of publications, brands, stylists, photographers, writers, all these people, they're constantly just like dropping links to different articles or they're dropping links to like photos and shoots and all these different things. Twitter is really, really amazing. My suggestion is to go through and find every single brand that you know of or you don't know of, follow them. Every single publication that talks about fashion, whether it's the New York Times or The Cut or Forbes, Everybody on occasion talks about fashion and so you'll see a lot of fashion articles pop up on your Twitter feed. Also, follow the writers of these articles. I mean, a really great tip and the people that I love the most on Twitter are actually the writers and editors of Fashionista.com. Like, they're fucking funny, they always interact with each other, like they're constantly talking about fashion. They're really amazing. So like be following everybody. There's no reason to not follow somebody. And like, if you don't like somebody, you can unfollow them because they're not gonna know who you are. They like, don't really care. So Twitter's amazing. And you're just constantly gonna be getting new articles, seeing new things, finding new designers. Like, it's amazing for that. So that's my biggest recommendation is get a Twitter and just follow every single person that you can. Honestly, just go through all the people that I follow. Like, that's totally fine. Follow every single one of them and you'll be getting the same fashion information. It's amazing. I use it at least like three times a day. It's really great. Next up is something that's a little bit more fun, which is Instagram. Now, I don't do this myself, but I would suggest this for anybody that doesn't want to clog up their feed with just fashion stuff. Start a whole new Instagram besides your normal or your personal Instagram. Have an Instagram that like, you don't really have to post on it at all, but you can follow everybody that you want. So you can constantly just be going through and seeing constant fashion content. Follow every single brand, follow every single blogger, every stylist, every designer, every photographer and makeup artist and hair artist and writer and editor and like 
all people. Follow whoever in fashion that you want. You can learn so much through Instagram as well. And also you get to see all of the new looks. You'll be memorizing what brands are showing what pieces. You'll be able to memorize collections too. There's a constant stream of content on Instagram. Just like make a new one. You don't have to tell anybody. You can just follow everybody that you want and see all the stuff that you want also. And again, if you don't like somebody or somebody's getting really fucking annoying, aka me, uh, you can definitely unfollow them too. They'll never know and you're an anonymous little fashion Instagram hoe and we love that. So next up are some websites that you can be following. Websites obviously are where a lot of the writers and editors and models and all these different things put their work. So it's always good to know a good solid amount of fashion websites that when you're bored as fuck, you can just click through to all see different articles and different takes on fashion and all that kind of stuff. First up is the business of fashion. The business of fashion is probably like the most altogether fashion publication. It really looks at the business side of fashion and it does on occasion post some good fashion moments. I will say it's probably where I go at least once a day to look for fashion news. It's probably the only site that I go on every single day. It's just great. It really posts interesting articles. It looks at all different ways that the industry comes together. It's really actually a one of a kind kind of site and I love it for that. Also Fashionista, as I said before, Fashionista is more of like a pop culture meets fashion kind of vibe. And I have to say, all the editors are amazing. They write really interesting, well thought out articles. Sometimes they can get a little bit like, you should buy this, or like Bella Hadid wore these nine different shoes. But like for the most part, they're really amazing analytical articles that like cross into pop culture and fashion in like really amazing, wonderful ways. And they actually are like pretty funny. So it's not like you're reading a boring ass newspaper either. Next up is Glossy. It is another fashion site, but it kind of blends like the technology, digital, social media. It really looks at the way that like fashion approaches the internet. And you think it's really, really smart and interesting to look at it. I don't look at it all the time, but like still it's a great resource if you're looking for like information on internet or digital marketing and all those kinds of things. The one thing I will say about the BOF and Glossy is that I'm pretty positive both of them are going to be or already are paid subscriptions. Next up are ID and Days. So both of these are British fashion publications. They're very indie. They really look at youth culture and how it intersects with the fashion industry. They're very much so historical magazines that really looked at underground pop cultural moments and intersected them with fashion. They still do post a lot of really, really great editorials, articles, and all these different kinds of things. Obviously the magazine versions are also great, but I really like a lot of writers on there. So next up is The Fashion Law, which is run by Julie Zerbo. She is literally amazing. As you can tell from the title of the website, The Fashion Law is pretty much a mixture of fashion and the law. A lot of the times it looks at like patent law and the way that certain brands interact in the international sect. And I mean, if you are looking to be a lawyer who also loves fashion, I would definitely check this website out. It's really amazing and really interesting. I don't always read the patent cases because like they're a little bit too much for me. I don't have all of that up there to memorize or understand it. But I will say Julie is probably one of the best and the ultimate investigative fashion journalists. If there's one person that you really should be looking at and watching and following, it's probably Julie. Also, the New York Times style section, it's literally probably one of the most well-to-do fashion publications. It has really amazing editors like Vanessa Freeman and Matthew Schneier. Pretty positive I said that right. And also Bill Cunningham, who literally invented the genre of street style, was always publishing there once a week on Sundays. So like it is an iconic newspaper and it always makes really, really interesting informational pieces about the fashion industry. I would definitely check it out. It's really smart. I will say, I think it is also a subscription based situation. So you'll have to see if you want to pay, maybe your parents read like the New York Times and you can steal their code. It's like Hulu or Netflix, but more intellectual. Another one is Man Repeller. Man Repeller, started by Leandra Medine, is a really amazing site. I don't read it as much as I probably should, but I do think Leandra has really, really, really curated an amazing site that doesn't only focus on fashion, but also lifestyle and culture and all these different things. It's really great. I really love it. And when you get to see a pretty poppin' ass editorial on there, 
it's amazing. Another one is high snobiety. I always try and call it high snobriety, but like apparently that's not the name. It's essentially like the streetwear New York Times. It's interesting, they break some pretty good informational articles on there. They're the ones that said the vet mall was like dying and then Dimna had like a whole mental breakdown. So I mean, if that's not good journalism, I don't really know what is. The final one is Wikipedia. Honestly, Wikipedia is so great and amazing and smart. The next to last one is Vogue Runway. If you guys don't know what Vogue Runway is, it is probably the best place to see all of the fashion shows that you wanna see through photo form. They usually have full looks from all of the shows and detailed shots and atmosphere shots. And they usually give reviews of the collections as well. It is run by like Vogue editors. So take it with a grain of salt. It's not, you know, the most independent and like critical thinking site, but it always has the best fashion images. So go there, check it out. And it also has an app. So if you want to download the Vogue Runway app, like be my guest. I literally go on it at least once a day. Also, there's models.com, which essentially is a database of all of the fashion publications, editorial shoots. And you can also like look up all different kinds of photographers or stylists or models or hair and makeup people that you wanna like check out if you really love Stephen Klein. You can look up Stephen Klein, you can see all of his work. It's free and I'm pretty positive all you have to do is sign up and like make an account and you can see everything on the site. They also like post their own content as well, talking to like younger models and newer models. So check that out, it's pretty solid. The final website and the most important one in my opinion is Wikipedia. Wikipedia is free to everybody and it's where I started like my fashion journey. It's where I started looking at different designers histories and brand histories and all this kind of stuff. When I was like 14, I literally was like, all right, Google Alexander McQueen and okay, reading all about him and I read all about his life. It's not the most detailed thing because it's like Wikipedia. It gives you a good foundation for like information on fashion and the fashion industry and brands. It's smart, it's interesting and it's quick to read. Definitely check it out. Like you can be on there all damn day. Next up is YouTube channels, obviously, me, like Hot Limon, the original, the OG. <laughs> um, but yeah, like me, subscribe. Also another really, really, really amazing one is Show Studio, which is run by the fashion photographer, Nick Knight. It essentially posts amazing breakdowns of runway shows and certain pieces. They do a lot of panels talking about different fashion shows. I learn a lot from it. It's really amazing. They bring in students often once a season to like get their opinions on the shows. And you get to see a lot more of industry insiders' thoughts on collections. It's very objective and it's very subjective. And I think it's a really great, great, great YouTube channel. Also the best video on there is the Lady Gaga Tom Ford music video for like an ad campaign. I watch that at least like 14 times a day and it never, never, never disappoints me. ID essentially posts like some pretty amazing fashion video documentaries and they're not like old ones, they're like new and current ones. My favorite is the one where they follow Charles Jeffrey all around New York. They also interview different celebrities like Lord or Sam Smith or Troye Sivan. I would check it out and subscribe, it's amazing. Also M2M, it's called Made to Measure. There's also a website which I didn't talk about in the websites, but M2M pretty much posts all the fashion shows and amazing documentaries both on its website and on YouTube. The website is really amazing, it's free. I would check it out if you're looking to watch like the best fashion documentaries in the world or fashion films or anything like that. Definitely go to M2M, they're amazing, I love them. I'm literally on there all the time. And you learn so, so much. Another suggestion is following fashion brands on their YouTube channels. I know Prada is pretty great. Gucci's also pretty good and like Dior, Chanel, those kinds of brands always post, not often, but they post a lot of good, interesting content if you're like into all that kind of stuff. So I would check that out as well. Also street style YouTube channels, they're like actually pretty great. I tried to do it like way back when, when I first started my channel. I'm not good at it, but there are a lot of amazing, really good street style channels on YouTube that you can follow that post great little looks and behind the scenes from fashion shows and fashion weeks. Also, I would follow the Vogues on YouTube as well. American Vogue, British Vogue, Teen Vogue, and French Vogue all post some pretty solid content. American Vogue posts those amazing after New York Fashion Week videos and every single time I die, they're amazing, I love them. Also Ami Song, who runs the blog Song of Style, she is really amazing. She like takes you into 
all of the beauty of Fashion Week and Fashion Month. She's usually going to like different cruise shows or Fashion Weeks and all that kind of stuff. She's great. I love her. She's funny. Like, she is the exact opposite of me. She has like optimism and love in her heart. It's great. It like makes me feel warm inside. Also, The Met has a YouTube channel as well. You learn a lot more about like art and stuff and sometimes they post some like costume institute stuff as well i would check it out and you know you can unsubscribe if you don't want but it's great another one is ff channel they post a lot of fashion show videos on their channel as well they're pretty great i really look to them for any time i'm going to like watch a fashion show they're pretty solid i like them also vice news vice news posts like interesting current event documentary kind of stuff, which I love because you need to know about the world in order to know about fashion and the culture and how they all correlate. Very important, I would subscribe. Also, the BOF has a few panel videos, which I think are kind of interesting. They're not all great, but still subscribe to the channel. It's pretty solid. So also magazines and magazines now are a lot less necessary than they were maybe five, six, seven years ago. Social media pretty much dominates the scene in terms of fashion, so like that's where you want to be. But if you're looking for some good fashion magazines, I would suggest System, Document Journal, CR Fashion Book, Another, ID, Dazed and Confused, New New, Love, V, W, Purple, and all of the Vogue except American Vogue, like the other Vogues are usually pretty interesting and have like interesting content. So yeah, magazines are never necessary, but if you really love a certain cover or editorial in it, it's always great to purchase one. I don't purchase them a lot, but when I do, it's one that I really love or I find really special and I want to use it as like a coffee table kind of book. Finally, we're going to be talking about some podcasts. I just recently discovered that the podcast app from the iPhone or from Apple is amazing. Like I was using SoundCloud and like, I was missing the fuck out. So yeah, podcasts, they're really great. I'm really loving them a lot currently. You have Glossy, which does a podcast, which is really, really interesting and looks at like technology and all that kind of stuff. I also really love Barney's. They're like a pretty, pretty solid one. And they get some like really good, interesting people that you've probably never heard of in there, but people that are really important to the industry who you'd probably never know about. Another great one is Fash On, Fash Off. It is done by Either ID or Days, I don't remember, don't like shit on me for it. I think it's ID, but it's a good solid look at the fashion industry. They get in like different experts to like come and talk. Also the BOF has one. It's a lot more intersecting different industries into fashion. So it's not like the juicy gossip fashion kind of stuff. It's more like how does technology or like different bodies or anatomy and all those kinds of things intersect with fashion. Also, 4 p.m. and Fashionista is a podcast run by Fashionista. I don't think that they do it as much as they did, but they have some pretty good little discussions about fashion and current fashion news if you want to check it out. Also, Failing Upwards. It's done by two guys that were at like Four Pins and Complex before that. And now they do their own like fashion-y sort of podcast for Barstool Sports. They kind of look at more like streetwear kind of fashion culture stuff. So if you're into that, definitely check it out. And the last one is Fashion No Filter. I think they kind of stopped doing this podcast, but they did a really great segment on couture and I really loved it. And they talked to like Iris Van Herpen and I was like, sold, sign me up, I'm here, five stars. Yeah, so yeah, that is all of the fashion information I can give you. I won't link everything in the description box below, maybe I will, but like I will definitely list everything in the description box by like order that I talked about it. So don't worry, it'll all be there. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know any video ideas you guys want me to talk about or things you want me to talk about. When school is over, I'm going to like get back, back, back into the gig, I promise. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.